Good morning. Well, happy birthday, America. Happy 4th of July. It's wonderful to see you all, and I wish you many, many blessings as we come together. And uh, I just, it's a pleasure, it's, it's wonderful to see you. I would like to uh, recognize uh, a person's birthday today, born today, uh, Rich Weston. Uh, Rich Weston's birthday is today, and um, and also in recognition not only Rich Weston's birthday, but all those other birthdays that we missed these past Sundays. So let's let's uh, play Happy Birthday. Nancy's oh. birthday today too. Oh, Nancy's birthday today. Yeah. Okay. See you, Dick or twins. Okay. <laughs> Now, I've, I've been practicing with a mask on, so I'm going to keep doing this. I didn't put all that hard work in there for nothing. Please join with me in the, um, in the recognition of our graduates. And uh, do we have Allie? Do we have Avery? And um, I understand that, uh, and we have Zoe, but Zoe's not able to make it today, I understand. Zoe Maha. Allie, I'll stand you, let you stand right there, right by that flag. And Avery. We'll keep you six feet. Avery, if you come over here and stand by this flag. She doesn't have a bulletin either. Well, these two young people have traveled a journey of learning that very few of us get to recognize in these modern times. And that is eighth grade. Eighth grade graduation is a, a time where, well, it's just the beginning of many graduations in life. And it's an opportunity in our learning that we are able to bring what we have, the fundamentals. And the challenge will be for Avery and Allie as they look forward going to high school is taking those fundamentals, those three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, and applying it in a new and different ways. And I really envy the two of you, because if I could just crawl into your skin, get into your shoes, I would love to walk that journey that you're about to walk in higher education, high school, and whatever's beyond that. It is exciting. And I want to wish you many blessings, and this is just a, a small way to say we want to bless you and recognize what you've accomplished. And like I said, not very many schools or communities recognize eighth grade education or graduation anymore. Mine didn't. So I envy the two of you for accomplishing something that it really took a lot of hard work. And now you're ready to set on to a new adventure. So Avery, let's just wish you many blessings. And Allie, want to wish you many blessings. And let us give a hand. Well, thank you.
if you've joined with me in the call to worship, hear the word of Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We seek the rest Christ offers, for we are often busy and anxious. Christ invites us, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. There is so much we want to learn about living. We want our lives to count for something. Jesus assures us, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In a harsh world, we long for kindness. We can trust and rest that is truly refreshing. Again, Christ promises, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In Jesus Christ, we find true freedom and the joy of living according to the Spirit. Now we just ask you to sing, sing to yourself, hum, but and if you like to say a little louder, okay, but we like to minimize our singing, and those that are in the cars, sing to your heart's content, because we love to, see, to hear the, the choral singing of the cars as they we come to sing America the Beautiful. confess our sins before God as the people of God. Let us pray together. I do not understand my own actions, O God of all life. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Hear me and answer, gracious God. Amen. And now let us take a moment and reflect on this prayer of confession with, and confess our own personal sins to God. Amen. God's answers come again from the Apostle Paul's writings. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are set free from the law of sin and death. Live therefore according to the Spirit and set your mind on things of the Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Believe and celebrate this joyous news. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them 
to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those of whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who are weary and a burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Glory be to God's holy word, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. Amen. These past few weeks, months, and whoever would thought we would be saying months, before we would come back and worship our Lord God. We've had a visitor that's come by our church and made his present known to us. And I'd like to introduce you to Fireball. Well, yes, Fireball, welcome, and Fireball welcomes you. You see, our sermon today is composed of both the children and adult sermon together. And that's how we're going to be doing our children and adult sermons together. And, um, and you know, I always have an object lesson for our children, and Fireball... It's a part of this lesson, and as he came back and visited us back in May, he has a, a sweet tooth. Huh? Oh, he has a sweet tooth. Can you hear me now? Or could you hear me before? I think you could hear me before. It's pretty loud over here on this side. Yeah. Okay. Well, um... Well, he had a sweet tooth, and um, and Fireball and I, we've been talking throughout the week, and it's hard that a dragon talks to you. Now, he doesn't talk aloud, but he does talk to Miss Dawn, he talks to Miss Sarah, he talks to, to me, and and uh, anyone that might come by and just say hi, and he'll, he'll acknowledge you. And Fireball has a sweet tooth, and uh, Fireball, we were talking about the word yoke. He heard me reading today's scripture lesson with the, the word yoke. Well, Fireball ran down onto my shelf, or I ran down to the kitchen, actually, and grabbed some eggs. And I told Fireball that not yolk of eggs, but yolk. And, and Fireball, you know, just said that, well, you know, the Jesus talks about yokes. And he said, I, I've made these. You know, and Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Take it upon me. But I told him it's not yolk of eggs. It's yolk. And as we tried to share with Fireball, and he recognized that a yoke it's not eggs, but but it is a piece of wood or a piece of iron that we put around our necks. And when I said, well, fireball, a yoke is what Jesus asks us to do. He invites us to take his yoke upon us and that we will share and what's amazing is that the burden becomes light now fireball he likes sweets and he said 
Well, does the yolk, the wood, is it a sweet wood? Because Fireball likes to eat. He likes to eat sweets. And when he looked at the wood and, and the picture, and I said, no. But Fireball told me that we are, we are people that are attached to Jesus. And that we need to always remember that our burden will be shared by Jesus. And Jesus brings the sweetness of life into our lives. So I'm going to have Miss Dawn take Fireball here. Let him show you and introduce you to him. But we've had fun with Fireball. And Fireball was on to something because we do get confused with yolk and yolks. But the important thing is what Jesus wants us to do, and this is interesting. If you read a little before in Matthew, you'll begin to find the tension between Jesus and the Pharisees. And Jesus' life's been full of tension. And Jesus recognized that what the Pharisees required to be a people of God, and what Jesus experienced in growing up, was not an easy thing. Following the Mosaic Law was not sweet. It's not like Fireball with a sweet tooth. And that's why I told Fireball. It was not sweet. It was sour. It was bitter. And despite people doing their best to follow the Mosaic Law, people failed. Jesus recognized that. But you remember Jesus said, I did not come here to abolish any laws, but to fulfill it. And this is what's interesting about this piece of scripture. Is that, is that in the fulfillment, is that Jesus invites us to take upon his yoke. And by taking on his yoke, it's light. It's sweet. And it's a way in which we are able to walk with Jesus. Actually, it's a way for Jesus to walk with us. In our scripture, too, it recognizes that Jesus knows the Father. And the Father knows Jesus. And we're invited to experience our Lord God in a sweet way. Now I hope the children, as they open up their bags, will see some sweet jelly beans. Because back in Easter I said, when you all come back, you'll have a little treat. Little jelly beans. And let me tell you, children, Fireball almost ate them all. He did. Boy, it was a fight. I, I won't go into it, but it wasn't easy. And that's why I asked Fireball to come and just to be a part of our congregation to, to share. To share that we got to struggle together. And Jesus invites us to struggle with him. And to show us how to walk God's way. Because Jesus knew that no one was perfect to walk the way the Pharisees wanted people to walk. It was impossible. So Jesus gives them a sweet yoke. The yoke of Jesus Christ, which is grace. It's amazing when you experience God's grace and how sweet it is. And it's an ability for us to walk with God. And what's really neat is that as we walk in this yoke with Jesus and walking the way, the truth, and the life, we begin to share with the world through our behavior, through our actions, through our deeds, and through our works, the sweetness of God's grace. One thing that Fireball had right in our conversation a yolk of an egg is one of the rich substances 
of the egg. It's a sweet part of the egg. And Fireball mentioned, you know, that egg yolk itself is so sweet and so nutritious that that's God's grace within an egg. I couldn't argue with that. And Fireball did learn about what yolk is as a wooden device, an iron device, a harness, where two people are walking together. We're two animals. And in our case, one person and Jesus Christ. It's interesting how we look at how Jesus helps us to walk through life, to experience the sweetness of grace. And that yoke helps us, to prevents us from stumbling. And when we do, Jesus is there with us. He lifts us up. And what's exciting is that Jesus invites us to walk with others in this life. And that enables the sweetness of God's grace for the world to see. To see God face to face. Because as you see, as we gather together, where two or three are gathered, there I am also. There is Jesus. There is God. God is here. And when we have that yoke upon us, and we walk with Jesus... We're inviting others to walk with us to experience the sweetness of grace in our walk with the Lord. Well, I hope you get to know Fireball. And a part of our coming together is for combining the children and the adult sermon together, an object lesson. And because we're all children at heart. So take the sweetness of God's grace, take the sweetness of God's yoke, Jesus' yoke. And wear it. And walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite Holly to come up. Uh, Holly uh, has collected the prayer cards that you all filled out. She will read those. I do need to make one announcement that uh, there was a misprint in our bulletin, uh, and that being there is no mission meeting on the 12th. So there's no mission meeting on the 12th. So I apologize to the mission committee uh, for that oversight. So uh, Holly's going to read the Names of the prayers, the concerns. Oh, Christina. Oh, Christina. No, Christine. Christine. <laughs> we want to make sure you get recorded on film. Uh, congratulations and um, on the guess who. Cup. They can't hear you. Oh. I want to congratulate Christine on the, uh, the guest who cup. And, uh, and Holly, would you like to mention more about that? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Christine was our first person for Guess Who, and she won. And the cups are gorgeous, so in each week you're going to see in our bulletin the Guess Who. And so for the month of August, please fill it out because it's just fun. I went through the directory. I came up with 10 people. I have no idea who it is. And we're going to continue to do it till we have interviewed everybody in our church, so it's pretty cool. And then the other thing I want to mention is the Clipper Challenge. People, you guys, we, if we can raise this money, whoever puts in the largest donation can tell how Pastor Scott should get his hair cut. The sky's the limit on that one. So, yeah. yeah it really is. Yep. He's pretty willing. So don't forget about the Clipper Challenge also. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. I owe you chocolate, but it was too hot to fill the cup. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.
does everybody have their prayer requests in? Okay. Thank you for writing them legibly. Okay. We have one for Grace. She has a fractured ankle in her growth plate, and she's going to be casted for six to eight weeks. And also for Gary and Peg Dolter, because they're recovering from COVID-19. And let's see. Carolyn has prayer request for a medical procedure to go well this week. And you know Rich had a birthday, so... Nellie Tanners has is having surgery this week for a kidney stone on Friday. Bob, I I won't pronounce his last name, I'm gonna slaughter it, has a right broken ankle and back pain. Janny also back surgery, bowel surgery that's already done for recovery. And it's Judy Robertson, brother and sister in law. A friend, Debbie, who has skin cancer removed, that she will remain cancer-free. And for a cousin, Calvin, who has lost his wife. Dave's friend's dad fell and had to have brain surgery after he hit his head. And there's a long journey ahead of him, so please keep him in your prayers. It's a friend of Christine's. And prayers for all of us in these trying times and to love thy neighbor. That's a hard one even for me some days, so... We can all, I know I can do better. Um, Candy Dawson is continuing to battle cancer. And then Carolyn Weston is for positive results for a medical procedure on Tuesday. And we, Nellie Tanner, and all those suffering from anxiety. And that's, um, I do hair for a living, and I've noticed my people that normally don't have anxiety, a lot of more anxiety and a lot more depression. So, just to keep all of that in our prayers. So thank you. And part of our pastoral prayers will be our offertory blessing, and then we'll follow with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, we uplift all those names and all the concerns to you of this congregation. Embrace each one with your Holy Spirit. Embrace them to allow them to experience your love and your grace and to let them know that indeed that they walk with you and that we experience your gentleness and your and your love and that we do indeed find rest for our souls for we discover that walking with you is is easy and that our burden becomes light as we face our life's trials and tribulations. We pray for our nation, along with all the people that we've mentioned, because this nation was founded upon liberty and life and the pursuit of happiness. Embrace us as a people, O Lord. Allow us to continue to be united and to show the world that we are indeed a light for the world to see. Enable us to walk and to carry our yoke of freedom and liberty and, and the pursuit of happiness and what it means for this nation, but for what it means for the world as people throughout this world look upon us as a rock. Now, embrace us with a happy birthday, O Lord, on this 4th of July weekend. We're thankful for our nation. And we ask that you be with all the individuals who we've mentioned in our prayer. And we do give ourselves to you in our offerings that's been taken. But we give ourselves to you in our own personal dedication. As we dedicate our lives always to you on this Sunday mornings. And lead us into prayer as you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Embrace one another with such peace. Because you are the face of Jesus Christ walking in this world. And now the power of the Holy Spirit be with you as we depart. Amen.